high correction low nah that's not right either no altitude balloon 14 it's this is the balloon test balloon cut down but it's still a test it's a balloon cut down test, test. Okay. capsule cut down test okay you see this balloon panel right there it's gonna fall it's, the, it's gonna fall the one reason it's gonna fall because this this thing that I made um, made the string just cut off when when the time runs out. So we're gonna see it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it recording? Yeah. Okay. About thirty seconds. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 Mississippi. 3. 13. <laughs> Just watch it. Oh, oh, you did it. That was it. And um, that's pretty much it. Welcome, everyone. Dwayne Kellum here, back with another video. High altitude balloon 14 was going to test improvements I've made, resulting from what I learned from high altitude balloon 13. This was the second of three test flights I had scheduled for an upcoming lunar eclipse, which is going to take place on July 27, 2018. The eclipse path is going to be visible over eastern Africa, the Middle East, and India. It won't be viewable in my area, but I thought I might learn something about what could be causing the eclipse in the Flat Earth model. I may have to cancel the eclipse launch for reasons that are beyond my control. I'll tell you more about that later, but first I want to talk to you about what took place on this launch. The launch was scheduled for June 27, 2018 at 4.30 a.m. Based on the information I learned from High Altitude Balloon 13, I decided to completely redesign the payload for this launch. The gimbal camera is key to the experiment and has to function correctly to get good results. On the previous launch, the gimbal malfunctioned and failed to keep the camera locked in the direction I needed it to. I studied the video and available data and I speculated that the cause of the malfunction could have been the result of many factors. I needed to eliminate as many of those factors as I could and if the problem still wasn't corrected on this launch, I still had one more test flight to work out the bugs before the main experiment on July 27. On the previous launch, I placed all of the equipment into one capsule. This limited what I could include in the capsule. The battery was smaller than what was needed, and there could have been some interference with the gimbal controller caused by the other equipment in the capsule. I needed to supply more power to the gimbal. This meant I needed to use a larger battery. The space in the capsule was already tight, so I needed to redesign the payload. To keep things simple, I decided to separate everything into three capsules. This would allow me to send up a heavier payload because I wouldn't be limited to the six pounds had I used one capsule. Separating the load also greatly reduced the interference by the other equipment that was sent up with the gimbal. The gimbal capsule only contained what was needed for it to work. This included a battery, the radio controller, a DC to DC converter, and the gimbal camera unit itself. I also included a master switch to turn everything on. This would make setup easier by allowing the capsule to be sealed the night before the launch. The gimbal and the radio controller needed different voltages to work correctly, so I used the DC to DC converter to supply the correct power to each piece of equipment. On the previous test flight, the capsule's landing gear collapsed. So I redesigned it as well, and I also used a larger parachute to slow the descent rate. The payload also had two other capsules. One housed the radio and tracking equipment, and the other the computer equipment. Both of these capsules also housed the additional cameras. There were four cameras on board, three GoPro Hero 4 Blacks and one GoPro Hero 3 Silver. All of the cameras had lens changes. The gimbal and backup camera had a 5.4 millimeter lens and the other cameras had a 4.35 millimeter lens. One of the cameras was set up to take pictures every five seconds while recording the video. I was taking the pictures for David Wise, one of the hosts of the Flat Earth podcast show. 
He needed the pictures for a project that he was working on. The final camera was used to monitor a change that I made on this flight. Normally I use one balloon to send up the payload, but this time I decided to try something different. The payload required more lift than my previous launches because it weighed more. The payload needed about 300 cubic feet of helium to lift it to an altitude over 100,000 feet. This meant I also needed to use a larger balloon as well. A 3,000 gram balloon should have worked and I researched it and I found that the larger balloons had a higher failure rate than the smaller balloons. So I decided to do something different and use two 1,500 gram balloons instead of one 3,000 gram balloon. Things were going well during the setup process. It was a little windy that morning with the wind speeds between 3 and 6 miles per hour. We started the checklist and got through most of the steps when the mishap occurred. Both of the balloons were inflated and we were checking out the final steps when a strong gust of wind blew and slammed one of the balloons into the other. The resulting collision burst one of the balloons and I knew the remaining balloon would not carry the payload safely to altitude. So I canceled the flight and I cut the balloon to release the helium. I told my family that we could try again the next day. We cleaned up the launch site and later that morning I called my helium supplier. I asked the clerk if they had another BH300 cylinder and he told me that they didn't have any. I asked when some was going to be available and he told me to check back after Friday. The next week I checked back and I was told that there wasn't going to be any helium available for the foreseeable future. I checked with my other source for helium and was told the same thing. I have not been able to conduct the two remaining test flights and I'm not sure if the repairs I made will even work. The eclipse date is fast approaching and there's no helium available. This is why I'm not going to be able to conduct the experiment on the 27th of July. I put together a few clips of what happened at the launch site. Sorry I didn't get any balloon footage this time. I will restart the balloon flight experiments when the helium becomes available. Y'all take care, okay? Bye. Tying the string on the balloon. Downfall. I can't. You got the string. I got that string. Is the balloon gonna? How you round the value? Now? Um, yes, um, this is uh, Dwayne Kellum. I'm going to be launching a balloon this morning. They wanted me to call an hour before the launch. Okay, what's the? The balloon, num the balloon number is HAB-14. HAB-14? Yeah. I'm in Santa. I'm in Santa Nella, California. Okay. And is there a transponder or anything on it? Um, I have uh, one that I can can, but not not something that you all can uh, see. I'll, I'll report when it gets to sixty thousand feet. Sixty thousand. Okay. Okay. Okay, initially it's going to go west, and then it's going to swing back, uh, initially it's going to go east, I'm sorry, and then it's going to swing west, uh, but it won't reach uh, 60,000 feet before it, it's going to reach 60,000 feet before it swings back uh, west. Okay, and what time are you uh, We're going to be leaving, uh, launching in about one more hour, I still have some more stuff I got to do. Oh, 60,000 feet, uh, about an hour. Yeah, to, to get to about, well, no, not, not an hour. I would say about 45 minutes. Okay. Okay, okay is there a contact number for you? Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's uh, uh, 209 270.
Uh, Dwayne Keller. All right, thank you. All right, you too. Bye. That's okay. I, I, I won't call in the home. It's good. Oh, man. You can have to go in the door. You can be hot there. Oh, gee, what time is it? Uh, what's the night? It's 7.51. Huh? 2.51. 2.51? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Taping the balloon. Um, I took you, I took a picture of you taking it. Wrong tape. My checklist is already 62 things out. it would have been better. I'm keeping the scrap. I feel it inside. Huh? I don't think air's coming up because all this going Come up instead of out. I feel it. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, uh, Dwayne Keller. Um, we're going to cancel our lunch this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. <laughs> so how are we doing now? What's happening? Interesting. Why that cost? Oh, you should record record that everything. <laughs> Did you record the whole thing? No. 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 Stand in the back just in case it pops. Maybe then you can use it for something else. I am! Like send it a balloon for. <laughs> I think that they can use that for like if just an experiment, science experiment. <laughs> I don't know. That's my balloon right there. That's Daddy's balloon if he wants it. I'm gonna draw on the balloon, that's why. I like drawing on balloon. Gone. 300 leaves, 300 cubic feet. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking when we were talking about it. I said, uh, if What's it inside out, of a helium balloon? Because, you, know, you know, we could probably do it again yeah. tomorrow if you want to. We still got enough balloons. We can do it tomorrow. Oh, it's a bit more helium. But just use one. Again. Uh, just use one balloon. Uh, if I do one balloon, it only go up to 30,000 feet. And? But, yeah, it's if you wanna go two, it's gonna be twist again, and then yeah, it's yeah, we go. I'm just, I know we're not gonna go two. We'll we'll do one. But what I may do is just just take some of the paint off.